Okay, so uh, welcome back to part two. And um, this is the kind of part where I'll show you how to actually tune up the wooden part of the, the kanna, so the, the body. Um, if you haven't already done so, and as a quick recap, um, by this stage you should have um, fully tuned up your blade set. So flat back uh, on both your chip breaker and your blade. Uh, and they should make together without any kind of wobbling and any gaps uh, at the edge here. So they're all nice and uh, tight and flush together. Also the width of the actual cutting edge on your blade should be slightly less than the width of your chip breaker. So that was um, kind of covered in a, a separate video uh, to this kind of series and I'll put a link in the description if you missed that. Um, so this is what you kind of should have at this point. Now, uh, in this, the first thing to kind of do in this part is um, to fit the blade to your um, kind of mortise in here. And for that you will need uh, a float. So here I've got an Iwasaki carving file. It's not actually a float. Um, I don't know if you can actually see, but it's like a, it's kind of like a float and then it has these kind of large teeth. Um, but it's, it's it's not profiled like a f uh, float. The teeth are kind of um, like like miniature plane blades, basically. Um, so it leaves a very smooth finish. Um, a float would also work just fine. Um, as I said in the, the kind of the first part, also a push scraper, so uh, an old metal working file, which you've kind of ground the end off to a, a 90 degree angle there. Uh, that would also work nice because all you're aiming to do is to basically scrape this bed. Um, so you're not actually looking to remove a lot of material and um, you'll actually see later how much material is removed per pass. Um, so get a tool, something like, you know, a, a scraper or something. Um, another thing you'll need is um, a narrow chisel. Um, this is a three millimeter wide chisel, so pretty narrow. Um, this is for getting uh, into these mortises here, so you want to be able to have, you want something to be able to pair the side walls in here um, because you want to tune that width to the width of your blade. Sometimes that's not uh, wide enough, and um, other than that, you you just need some sort of a kind of a, a narrow-ish, thin-ish chisel to be able to to get in here to pair uh, any kind of leftover kind of fibers off. Um, you know, clean up in there generally, uh, and that's all you need for this kind of first step. So gather your tools, and I'll I'll give you a close up. So here's the um, the body and uh, the blade. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to cover your blade back. This is actually something I kind of mentioned, uh, forgot to mention in the earlier part. But you want to cover the blade blade of your back here, the bevel. Make sure you do actually do that, and these two sides with some sort of a, an oil. Um, you can use pencil, although I, I find that doesn't actually leave such a very good mark, um, so I like oil. If you use oil and pencil, that leaves very dark marks, very easy to see. However, it's a pain to get them all out and it kind of leaves a mess um, if you're not careful. So I use pure, just plain camellia oil. So I, I put the blade in. Uh, you can see I've given it a good firm push and um, remove this and you should be able to see it's left some marks here, these spots and I'm just going to take the float and um, kind of scrape roughly because this is a very rough pass right now. I'm going to scrape all these spots where the oil has touched away. Uh, in the beginning there won't be very many and as you kind of progress, you should get more and more uh, contact area between the two. And that's kind of good. So just keep scraping away. Make sure you get all the kind of traces. Uh, make sure you check under these areas here. Um, and that's it for the first pass. So you can see I only removed a few shavings here, um, nothing in the way of kind of chips or anything. So again, uh, recoat the blade, 
um, place in. I'm just going to push this in. Uh, you can also use a mallet to kind of lightly tap in. Um, that's not a problem either. And you can see there's a, a few more contact marks here, uh, some down here. So it's just the same process again. Uh, remove. You only really want to concentrate at this point on this bed area. Don't do anything to the side walls here or anything under the, the especially nothing under this kind of uh, rail wedge here, um, because typically in the early stages you won't need to touch anything there. Uh, in some badly kind of cut die or roughly cut die, you'll get um, some heavy contact marks along the side. Oops. Uh, side walls. Um, if you do have any contact marks there, take your thin chisel um, and you want to pare lightly away. You don't want to take too much material here uh, because you don't actually want this mortise to be too wide. You want it to be quite tight so that it guides the plain iron down. You can see here I'm only kind of like lightly almost scraping this away. And that should be enough for now. So um, again another round. Some oil. You only need to put oil on this bevel area if you have that sumi ledge because um, you know otherwise nothing will actually be touching this bevel. So you only need to do that if you have that. I'm just going to tap this in with a light taps uh, to seat the, way, uh, the iron in. Removed. And you can see I've got some more contact points. You probably can't see this very well on the camera. But uh, in kind of real life here you can see a lot of shiny spots. Uh, it's just a matter of repeating the process until you have um, a, a better fit and you're actually looking to get the iron uh, protruding around about maybe three millimeters from the mouth so you push it in with hand pressure a couple of light taps with a mallet and you should be able to see the iron protrude three millimeters or so uh, away from this mouth and that's when you stop. Um, I'll, so I'll keep doing that until I get to that stage and I'll come back and show you. Um, I'll probably give you a mid kind of progress uh, shot as well to give you some tips because there are some things to keep in mind when you actually get a bit closer. So um, I'll, I'll keep going until I get a bit closer. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of in the middle of the tuning and I've lightly tapped the blade in and you don't know if you can see this very well but it's about maybe four four millimeters from the edge with some light tapping and this is where you want to start being careful uh, once you get to this kind of uh, level of fit you want to take a look at how the blade is protruding uh, compared to this mouth line uh, give it some light even taps in the middle so that it seats kind of like naturally. Don't don't kind of tap it left or right or anything to kind of make it wobble left right. Uh, so give it a nice even taps down the middle, and this should let you see how the blade will naturally sit in the uh, kind of mortise that you've been fitting. Uh, if you have any kind of left or right um, sort of unevenness uh, with reference to this mouth line, that means your bed is not actually um, even. So it's tighter on one end than the other so when you tap this down it kind of shifts a bit 
the iron so it will come out unevenly. Uh, so you should fix that or keep in mind uh, which end is coming out so that you can pare that side of the bed down a bit more to uh, keep the, the iron protruding evenly out uh, from the sole here. Uh, this obviously uh, has the prerequisite that your blade is actually it's actually honed kind of perpendicularly, perpendicularly to the kind of center line of your plane. Generally these plane blades are kind of tapered in this way so they're thinner in this end than up here so you can't just take a square and kind of reference off uh, and check that your edge is actually square to the end of the blade. Um, you could I guess take a measurement off left and right and make sure that it's kind of relatively even um, but obviously for the protrusion check I just uh, showed you earlier uh, you want to make sure that your edge is actually kind of relatively square otherwise you're just going to be chasing down and kind of uh, pairing in uh, a weird kind of angle into your bed. So I actually put a little bit of graphite on here uh, just to show you the fit I'm getting now. Um, you can see a lot of this area has uh, contact and a little bit down here as well. Uh, so it's, it's kind of getting fuller and fuller. Um, you know, but once you kind of uh, get to this stage, it's, it's a matter of really kind of taking your time and fine tuning. Um, up to this stage, I've been taking away quite rough um, kind of passes um, with this float. This is this is actually kind of scraping but I've been kind of pushing pretty hard and not being paying too much attention to these marks uh, to get to this stage but uh, once you're at this stage you really want to kind of take it slower uh, be more careful in scraping these kind of marks out and um, as I said earlier uh, keep constantly checking for the protrusion of the blade from the sole and make sure it's not skewed. Um, so continue with the process and once the blade comes within about two or three millimeters from the mouth, two being on the loose side, three being on the slightly tight side, uh, depending on your preference, um, but uh, keep going until you get to that kind of area. Okay, so um, I've gotten the blade to in the, uh, in the mouth here to within about maybe three, two or three millimeters from the actual mouth from protruding. And um, this is kind of where you want to evaluate uh, the kind of the state of the, the kanna before you proceed any further. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your actual sole is relatively kind of flat. Um, if it has any major warps, twists, etc., uh, take them out now with a, either a plane or sandpaper and glass or something like that. You don't have to get it perfectly flat, but you want to get it so that it's relatively flat so that uh, when you do the kind of final tuning with your blade when it's really close to the mouth you don't take you don't need to take off too much material because then you could change the uh, the kind of geometry here and you may you kind of risk opening up the mouth a bit too far so make sure your sole is relatively flat uh, on this particular die uh, the the sole is flat so um, I, I'm not going to show you how to do that um, uh, the next thing you need to do uh, to check is um, these kind of ramps here, you can see these two here, sometimes they haven't been pared down fully. Uh, this one, uh, this particular guy has been pared down uh, quite, uh, quite well, but as, as you advance the blade down, you sometimes see on some die that the Mimi here, which are the, the clipped corners, they kind of, um, they kind of mash against the uncut part of this ramp. And uh, before you kind of, you know, try to tap the blade in even further and kind of mash it down even more, uh, take a, a thin chisel and pare that down a bit so that, you know, it, it gives clearance for the blade to come down. Um, other thing you want to test is you want to, after you've kind of lightly tapped your blade in, you want to kind of grab your actual blade and sort of try to move it left and right here. Uh, to actually make sure it's solid, seated, so there's no high spots in the middle. Um, if you have a high spot in the middle, basically 
your blade will rotate around that and it won't provide a very solid seating. Um, I generally recommend that you actually, hang on a minute. I generally recommend that you pare down the middle of this uh, kind of section here, this bed area, a little bit more than you you actually need to because if you don't do that sometimes it can become too tight in the middle here and as you tap your blade down the these two kind of uh, wedge kind of edges here they press down on the edges of your blade and because the middle here is high uh, you kind of will create a very slight bow in your blade uh, not much but it's if you're aiming for really fine work uh, that, that actually makes difference and what happens is you'll find uh, the two corners of your actual blade will kind of cut into your work more than the middle the middle section and you'll leave these kind of plain tracks um, which are a pain basically to, to get out of your work so uh, try to kind of slightly relieve don't don't go crazy and kind of chop out a whole chunk here but kind of only a very slight uh, you know shaving or two from the middle section here uh, to give it a little bit more clearance so that your blade is basically pinched uh, on these two edges only. Um, other things to check for is uh, again this particular die doesn't need it but as you are tapping down you if you have this tsumi ledge you sometimes find um, as I said earlier you should actually be putting oil or some sort of marking uh, stuff on the bevel here and as you tap down if your if your tsumi ledge hasn't been pared down enough you'll see the oil kind of transfer onto this ledge and if you see that uh, basically either scrape it away or pare it away with a chisel uh, whichever is your preferred method otherwise if you keep going and keep tapping you'll basically split this ledge here and um, you know that's no good obviously so that's that's another thing you have to be careful of when you get to this stage um, other than that, uh, you basically just keep proceeding, except the difference being, instead of just lightly tapping, try to uh, kind of tap as as hard as you would normally expect if you're actually setting the plane. So I, I would expect something like that kind of level. You can actually hear that the pitch of the uh, plane as you tap go higher as it wedges in. and um, you want to tap with that kind of strength and see how far your blade goes down. You can see it's a little bit further down than when I showed you a little earlier. Uh, again, check to see to see the pro projection of these two sides of your plane are even along with this mouth. And um, basically keep checking and keep doing the pairing operations. Uh, but um, again, as I said, uh, use kind of a bit more force when you tap in. Uh, around the same forces you'd realistically use when you're actually using the, the plane um, and basically try to get the edge within about maybe half a millimeter of the uh, the edge of the mouth here when you get to that stage stop because that's when you want to tune up the sole of the plane so I'll, I'll basically keep going with this and um, I'll come back again I'll come back again uh, when I've done it. Um, incidentally, you can see here there's a, a kind of quite an even uh, amount of graphite kind of contact, and that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, you don't have to be really pedantic about having the whole bed, uh, you know, perfectly in contact with your blade. Uh, the main kind of areas you want to look at are this kind of U-shaped area along here, uh, along the two sides, and along the bottom near the bevel. Um, if, if you have good solid contact around there then you should be good to go.